Your favorite teacher, Ms. Garcia, has given your class an unusual assignment. There have been sporadic reports of blue sheep being spotted in Australia, and you along with your classmates have given the task of going down there and seeing if it's true. So after packing your bags and heading to the nearest airport, you take a long plane ride to the land down under. There, after a couple of quick tourist stops, you get on a train that's going to take you through the Australian countryside. And lo and behold, visiting your first farm, you immediately come across three beautiful white sheep. Excited by what you've found, you've decided to pull the emergency cord on the train and immediately head on back to the airport. There, you excitedly board the plane and head back to your homeland so that you can explain to Miss Garcia exactly what you found. There are no blue sheep in Australia, you proclaim. But have you reached a logical conclusion based on the evidence? Have you gathered enough evidence? Let's change this scenario slightly now. Let's say that you take the same plane ride down to Australia and you come across a blue sheep on your first farm visit. Would you be justified this time around in cutting your trip short? by pulling the emergency cord, taking a plane ride back to your homeland, and this time telling your teacher, yes indeed, there are blue sheep in Australia. Can you see the difference in these two scenarios? What would we have to do to conclude properly that there were no blue sheep in Australia? Can you see we would have to line up all the sheep and make sure there's not a single blue sheep among them? Let's keep all this in mind as we look at some code. Here's a problem that requires us to figure out if an array has no ones or threes in it. We're supposed to return true if that is the case. Has the student done a good job here? Well, they've got the for loop set up correctly to look through the array. And after looking at the very first element in the array, they decide to return true if the first element doesn't have a one or a three in it. Can you see that the student has made the exact same mistake that you did on your first trip to Australia by concluding that there were no ones or threes, but only examining the first element? The only way we can tell that the array has no ones or threes is if we look through the entire array. Let's have a look at the corrected code now. Here, we've fixed the code so that we return false as soon as we find a one or a three. Once we discover one of these elements, we don't need to keep searching in the array any longer. The only way we can return true, however, is if we go through the entire array and not a single one or a three is spotted. Try to see how this is analogous to looking for blue sheep. Here the ones and the threes represent the blue sheep. And the only way we can cl conclude that there are no blue sheep is by going through the entire array. Here's another common mistake that beginning programmers often make when starting these types of problems. Notice that there's an if-else structure located inside the for loop. The if returns a false and the else returns a true. How many times is the maximum number of times this for loop will execute? Can you see that the answer is one? It's important to understand that when we use a return statement, it means that we're not only leaving the for loop, we're also leaving the method altogether and returning to the caller. So if you have an if statement here with two return statements embedded inside, we're only going to execute the for loop once. That's the first time through. Let's conclude with one final example that describes what we learned in this video. Here, we're asked to return true after verifying that every single element in the array is either a one or a four. What would disqualify the situation here? Well, clearly, if we found an element that was neither a 1 nor a 4, we could immediately return a false. But the only way we can return a true is if we go through the entire for loop and don't find a single case where there is an element that is neither a 1 or a 4. Notice that the return false is inside the if, and then the true, which is a much harder thing to conclude, is outside the for. Keep this structure in mind as you work on these types of problems.